thank you to all the Georgians who did their duty to vote in the safest, most secure election in our nation's history. Millions of voters showed up to vote, and you voted in record numbers. The race for Georgia was called at 1235 overnight, being the first battleground state to flip since the 2020 presidential election. More than 5 million people casting their ballots here in the Peach State. Our election day didn't go off without some hiccups, though. Voters pushed through scare tactics at several precincts when someone called in bomb threats that led to evacuations. But the show went on, leading to some of the fastest results we've seen in a Georgia presidential election. Another key race in our state ended as predicted. Fulton County District Attorney Fani Willis beat Republican challenger Courtney Kramer and a precinct in Camilla, Georgia open late. So to make up for lost time, voting there just wrapped up an hour ago. We are covering all angles for you of Decision 2024. All right, let's get to our team coverage of local and national races. Ariana Manise, Liza Lucas and Molly Oak all with us this morning. All eyes, of course, on the race for the White House. All right, let's begin with Ariana Manise with our political team who's walking us through the vote totals across our state. Ariana, where do we stand right now? All right, so Cheryl, if we start by looking at the entire electoral map, we see that Vice President Kamala Harris with 219 electoral votes. Former President Trump with 266. Now, if we look, we see that Maine, New Hampshire, Michigan, Wisconsin, Arizona, Nevada, and Alaska, as of right now, as it stands, is too close to call these states. But as we've mentioned, former President Trump, he is still projected to win this race. We know you need 270 votes to be named the winner, but we see that former President Trump, he's sitting at 266. And the reason that he is projected to be a winner. Now, if we look at these scenarios, possible scenario, so as we know right now that Alaska and Maine, they're expected to go to former President Trump. So if we turn these two states red, as of right now, this is just a scenario. Vice President Kamala Harris, she'll have to win victory in New Hampshire, in Michigan, Wisconsin, Arizona, and Nevada. And if we look at the vote totals, we see that she still does not have 270 votes to claim victory in this race. And we see that former President Trump, he'll have 273 if the races in Maine and Alaska are called for him. Now, if we go back to looking at where the electoral map stands up right now, looking at some two key, two key swing states that we saw flip in this race, we saw Pennsylvania as well as our state of Georgia. Those two key swing states, they flip this time around which is why we're seeing the current electoral vote count sit at 219 and 266. Now coming up in my next sit, I'll have a breakdown of the congressional races because control of Congress was at stake as well this election cycle, as well as the outcome of state house races coming up in my next hit. Sending it back to you. Ariana, thank you. Let's send it over to Liza Lucas now live at the state capitol this morning. Liza, the Georgia Secretary of State is touting Georgia's election as record breaking and a big success. 73% of active voters cast a ballot despite the hurdles that we saw in counties. A lot of things happening here on the election day. That's right, and you spoke off the top of some of those hurdles. We were talking about those bomb threats, 60 threats received in counties across the state, and yet the Secretary of State noted that we still had that record turnout on Election Day, and we went into Election Day with record turnout for early voting. Secretary of State Brad Raffensperger praising the resiliency and efforts of county election teams, the poll workers, and those who've worked behind the scenes to pull off a smooth experience for voters. His office continuing to lean into the numbers reported throughout the day Tuesday. We're talking about the short wait times to vote and then the timely turnaround by election teams to process ballots and deliver Georgia's results. Uh, again, that official count coming in at midnight. What other state in the country had a 49 second check in time so that you had end up with a less than a five minute wait time during the whole process? and you're voting in and out the door in 10 minutes. We've worked hard to build a team. We've built hard to provide the voters the very best voting experience. 
Now, circling back to those threats that we mentioned off the top, Secretary of State Brad Raffensperger had a message to those who try to interfere in Georgia's election process, basically summing it up as you messed with the wrong Georgia. We will hear more from the Secretary of State's message in that regard coming up for you at 5.30 a.m. And then pushing ahead at 10 a.m., we will hear directly from a press conference uh, the Secretary of State's team is planning to hold at that hour. And we'll bring you the latest on air and online. Live at the Capitol, Liza Lucas, 11 Alive News. Liza, thank you. 11 Alive's Molly Oak joining us in Atlanta this morning. So, Molly, let's go a little bit deeper here in the A. How did our counties do locally? Yeah, we're checking in on a couple of different counties here in the metro. First, let's check in on Fulton County. That's where we are right now. Leaders say they knew Fulton County was ready for the 2024 election and say yesterday, well, simply put, proved it. They added they're pleased with how things went, not only at the polls, but also at the election center. The one hiccup the county faced, law enforcement says there were 32 bomb threats at different polling locations, which leaders say were all not credible. Over in Cobb County, leaders report it was also smooth sailing, aside from around 300 absentee ballots that had to be duplicated and manually entered into the voting system. And then back here in Fulton County, while it did deal with those bomb threats that you've heard myself mention and Liza as well, this is what leaders were saying over in Gwinnett County, also dealing with bomb threats. It looks like probably the last number as far as um, uh, Gwinnett Election Day turnout is going to be right around 100,000. I, I, uh, I haven't got the exact number yet, but it's going to be right around 100,000 uh, voters that uh, came out and voted in Gwinnett today. So um, pretty, pretty good about that. Like I said, record-breaking turnout. Um, definitely ahead of the uh, 2020 uh, totals. Now coming up in the next half hour, you're going to hear from more of our metro counties on how Election Day went for them. Back to you guys. Molly, thank you. Make sure to download the 11 Alive Plus app to stream your device this morning. We have full coverage from Election Night, plus Mr. Trump's full acceptance speech just a few hours ago.